this building on top of which the shooter was perched was actually a staging area for local law enforcement. How did they not know that there was a gunman on the roof? It's, you know, as the details of this begin to be revealed, it becomes a little more and more mystifying to me. Um, you know, generally speaking, uh, as I said last night, the Secret Service would not get their mission done were it not for the assistance of local, state, and other law enforcement. That's just routine. However, there are detailed briefings where responsibilities are clearly delineated. And uh, obviously here, there was a tremendous breakdown in communication somewhere. So, I, I, you know, all of that will come out in the investigation that the FBI does. Of course, the Secret Service will do a, a mission assurance investigation through their internal investigators to yeah. discover how this happened and, and, and make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, but I, I guess, Michael, maybe you, because you've been on these presidential details before, why would they be inside a building on the second floor of a building looking out to secure the area? I, I mean, the fact that the gunman was just over them and, and that a ladder was spotted leaning against the building, how did they not see this? Yeah, I think that the simple answer is that you would have one have to ha ask them for a, 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 an explanation. Um, but the bottom line is, is that regardless if you went into the meeting with the Secret Service, what we call our police meeting, with the intentions of uh, working traffic and you were reassigned to secure a building, you still have to do that job effectively. You know, threats come from multiple different angles. It doesn't just come from the ground. In this particular situation, it came from an elevated platform. If you're supposed to be securing a building, you secure the building from the inside to the outside to the rooftop. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for whatever reason, they thought it was, you know, vacation or whatever it was to sit inside of that building and think that nothing was going to happen. Well, obviously something happened. There was a catastrophic failure in communication of who was responsible for what and what the expectation was. And so I'm certain that that will get, um, you know, that will get ironed out, but it's completely unacceptable to say, that, you know, yeah. we didn't know what our option was. And, and, and Michael, the Secret Service has acknowledged that local police were searching for, quote, a suspicious man who had been flagged by passersby, and that Secret Service agents had, in fact, been alerted that there was a suspicious man in the vicinity. So why was Trump still allowed to go on stage? Well, I, I think that, you know, there's plenty of incidents where you have suspicious people in the vicinity of the area. But what that would have done, and, and uh, you know, a consciously aware officer, agent, uh, someone assigned to that particular location, um, you can't detect a suspicious person from an inside of an interior building. You need to be outside right. working that perimeter, identifying these areas, hitting your areas of responsibility, looking at your sectors. Um, the bottom line is, is this is just or police work. It, you can't secure a building from sitting inside. That's the bottom line. There is no reasonable expectation, you know, explanation of this. Uh, Donald, the FBI is still analyzing the gunman's cell phone. They still have not publicly said if they have found anything in there about a possible motive. But we do know he had no criminal history, no apparent strongly held political beliefs, at least that anybody knew about. The one thing everybody agrees on is he was a loner who spoke to practically no one. And that definitely does fit into a profile of a lot of the gunmen behind a lot of these kinds of mass shootings. Yeah, you know, I I think that what's going to be discovered in this is, is that, you know, uh, this kid, and that's basically what he was as a kid. Um, you know, I, I think we're dealing with somebody more along the lines of a, of a Hinckley Jr., somebody who was probably emotionally, mentally disturbed, uh, probably had some issues in his background. Uh, what sparked him to want to get attention this way? Uh, I have no idea at this point, but we'll find out. But I'm, uh, I wouldn't think that this is tied to anything more than just a, a very uh, disturbed individual, uh, because it's not measured in normal behavior, obviously. Right. Donald, we also learned that the gunman bought 50 rounds of ammo just prior to the shooting. So it does appear that he was planning this for at least a day. Yeah. And, and you know, that that's not uncommon. Um, the Secret Service, for instance, does studies, extensive studies uh, through the National Threat Assessment Center on school shootings. And, and I think what you're going to find here is that this is not unlike um, many of the school shooters that we see who sometimes have detailed planning ahead of time, mm -hmm. but also sometimes within a day or two concoct a plan and, and set it into motion. So 
I think there are a lot of parallels between school shootings and what you're seeing here with, with this with this individual. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.